Recently, over on the RenderFam Discord, I was asked how I would go about creating this material using Keyshot. Now, I gave it my best attempt, and this is what I ended up with. After some positive comments, I decided to take it a step further and created this nauseating animation. Then I decided to apply the material to a Lego guy. And then I took it a step further and decided the Lego guy would be abducted. After sharing these on Instagram and getting hundreds of likes, comments, and requests for tutorials, I decided to do a video on dispersion because dispersion is what's happening within this material that makes it look interesting. All right, so here's the game plan. I'm gonna show you how to create something interesting like you see on screen here. And with that, I think you'll be able to create your own awesome images. Now, before we get into Keyshot, I wanna share a few concepts with you to make sure you understand what's happening with dispersion. Now, if you look it up, you'll see it's the separation of light into colors by refraction or diffraction with formation of a spectrum. But where does this actually occur in our natural world and how exactly does this happen? And the most common examples you'll probably come across are rainbows, gemstones, and compact disks. But again, what is actually happening to cause this colorful event? So let's start by taking a look at light waves. Now, radiation is energy with magnetic and electric fields associated with it. And it also has wave-like properties, hence the term electromagnetic wave. The electromagnetic spectrum describes the range in wave frequency from low energy to high energy. Now, if we wanna dive into how color enters light, somewhere near the middle of the spectrum, we are able to see our energy in the form of light. Now, each colored light we can see is associated with a different wavelength. White light actually contains all of these colors and is often made by combining red, blue, and green light. Now, let's talk about refraction. When light comes into contact with glass, some of it will be reflected or directed away from the surface. Light that is not reflected will transmit through the glass. Now, because glass has a higher density than the air around it, the light will move through it more slowly. The slowing down of this light inside the glass will cause it to change direction slightly. And we call this refraction. Finally, let's talk about dispersion. When white light hits a prism, which is like a triangular shaped object, some of it is reflected and some of it is refracted. Now each wavelength moves through that prism at a different speed, creating separation between those waves. The refraction event is what actually causes those different wavelengths to separate. So before the light exits the prism, it is refracted one more time, spreading the different visible wavelengths even further apart producing a rainbow effect. And this is how we get our dispersive effects. All right, hopefully I didn't lose you in that last segment. I know it's not the most exciting, but it's important knowledge nonetheless. Let's go ahead and find out how to apply these concepts in Keyshot. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab the 3D model I'm supplying you with, drag that into Keyshot's real-time view, and take those default import settings. If we zoom out, we'll see we have a few objects here. In the scene tree, we've got a prism, we're gonna hide that for now. We have a cube and a sphere. Hover over the cube, hit Control D, grab that Move tool, move it off to the side. And let's go ahead and hold Control and click on that sphere. Control D again, lift them up off the ground. There we go. Next, we wanna change the material type from diffuse to dielectric. We're gonna go into the transmission color of their material and set it to be 99% white. So it's kind of like having a white glass material. Now what we wanna do is find the Abbey number or dispersion. Let's take this up to 50 to start. Uh, 55 is pretty close to what a diamond would have on a dispersion uh, level or an Abbey number. We're gonna take this down to 10 which is quite a bit lower, and you should start to see some rainbowy effects here. Now we really want to exaggerate this effect, so we're gonna bring it all the way down to one, which may not be very realistic, but hey, it looks cool, so why not? Now at this point, uh, we want some more contrast in our environment, so if we look at our environment settings, we see we've got the startup environment. We wanna go find one called Three Panels Straight 4K in the environment library, double click on that, and everything should look a little bit more extreme in the real-time view. We've got more color going on, and it's just generally got more contrast. Now, we can see that the background color of the environment is 
showing through this clear glass-like material. So keep that in mind. If you have a bright white color behind it, it's going to wash things out and make them look very white. And conversely, a dark color will make your glass or your dielectric material look darker. Now what we want to do is go ahead and play with the shape of this sphere because you might notice the cube itself kind of looks pretty cool, but the sphere does not. And that's just because it doesn't have any real interesting shape to cause a, a number of different dispersive effects. If you're looking to take your Keyshot skills to the next level, then check out the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. Inside, I share the exact process I've used and refined over the past 10 years to deliver renderings to some of today's most recognized brands, with over 15 hours of content broken into 100 plus bite-sized beginner-friendly videos, this is the most comprehensive Keyshot course available. When you enroll, you will learn how to turn a boring CAD model into beautiful photoreal images. Stop wasting time searching for tutorials on YouTube and fast track your learning by enrolling in the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. Click the link in the description below to learn more and see what other customers have to say about it. So I wanna set this on a solid background color and in the environment settings, we can click the color radio button and we can click on that swatch to the right and set the value to something like 10. So like a, a really dark gray, almost a black color. And this will make our images pop off the screen. Uh, but let's go ahead and play with the shape of this sphere. To do so, we're gonna select just the sphere, right click on it and unlink the material. Double click on it and pop into the material graph. Now we're gonna use something called displacement to change the shape of this sphere. And we need to do displacement and not a bump map because a bump map does not actually change the shape of the object. It just it does a few camera tricks, if you will. So if we right click, and get a texture, I'm gonna start off with one called Noise Fractal. If we were to preview this, you can see what it looks like. It's got these squigglies, and we can actually make it simpler by reducing the number of levels. I'm gonna bring mine down to two for now. We can play with that later. Let's get out of preview, right click and get a geometry and displace node. We're gonna take the outbound socket of the displace into the geometry socket of the root node and connect your noise fractal to the displace. Double click displace and change the displacement height down to one millimeter. And let's click on execute geometry node and see what happens. Let's go into that noise fractal and make it bigger. Let's try something like 50, like a lot bigger. And let's just try again. So it's wavy, but our displacement height is not high enough. Let's take that all the way up to five and hit execute and see what happens. So we get a kind of like a meatball looking thing. Let's go all the way up to 20. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. So this is starting to look pretty cool and we get all sorts of rainbow effects coming in. By playing with the size and the shape of this fractal texture and the displacement height, you're going to get different effects or overall shapes. So if we wanted to take the levels down from two to one, and take the scale up to say 60, and then go into our displacement height and try 50. Let's see what happens. You can use, and I encourage you to play with different 3D textures. I think like this cellular procedural might produce some really cool results, scratches or even spots maybe. Give those a shot. Now, if you want to smooth this out, if you're seeing this looks a little bit jagged in here, that's because your displace node doesn't have enough or small enough triangles. So if we disconnect this, you see the triangles are kind of big. I'm gonna plug that back in. And what we wanna do is go ahead and take this triangle size down to 0.25. And just a side note, the smaller you make those triangles, the more RAM you're gonna take up and the slower things may be, but the results are quite nice looking. The other thing that you can do is take your max triangles up a little bit higher. So I'm gonna take mine up to 12 and hit execute again, and that should smooth out some of my jaggedness. I think that's good enough for now. Uh, also, I should mention, in the lighting presets tab, if you don't have enough uh, ray bounces, this won't look as nice as it could. So let's go and set product as our preset, and everything brightens up, so that's pretty cool. Let's add a strong focus light, and we're gonna do that by hitting control five on the keyboard. That puts down a little plane. Let's drag this plane up higher above our glass meatball, double click on it and set its material type to spotlight. So immediately we get this effect where we've got the silhouette 
of our object, but the light's not moving through it, and that's a problem. That's because we have not enabled caustics. And there we go, that's the magic. That's where things start looking cool. Now, the color of the caustics is being determined by the dispersion that's happening within this material as well. To make this look a little bit better, what we're gonna do is go to the properties of our plane and add a small radius. That way we won't have super sharp silhouetted uh, shadows. So we'll go to one millimeter for now. That looks pretty good. I don't really love the way the spotlight looks. We're gonna find a way to get rid of it, but still keep the caustics on the ground. And I think that's gonna be what really makes this look nice. To do this, we're gonna add a ground plane. Hit Control and G, as in gamma, and double click the ground, and that's gonna edit the material properties of that ground plane we just put in. All we wanna do is turn off ground illumination, and that way the spotlight is not being reflected off the ground, leaving just the caustics in its place. Now from here, you can play around with the rest of these settings if you want, but you don't need to. It looks pretty good just as is. And the other thing that we haven't talked about is that your environment, believe it or not, is still playing a role in this. If we reduce the brightness of our environment, we shouldn't have quite so many hot bright spots here. So it's a balance. You wanna have an environment that has contrast and some bright areas to reflect, but you don't want it to be so bright that it blows everything out. So I'm editing this tutorial and I realized I forgot to mention a couple of fairly important things. And in general, there was a section I wasn't so happy with. So I'm re-recording that and dropping that in here. Just wanted to give you a heads up. So I want to address the graininess that we're getting in this material, double click on it. Uh, under Abbey number, we can increase the samples to something like 16, which should help with that quite a bit. Also, we can go to the image styles tab and use the denoise feature. I usually set mine to about 0.5 and my Firefly filter to about 0.2. You can play with these values to see what gives you the best results. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is the bright white areas that are overexposed. We could use the photographic mode and go into say low contrast, response curve, or high contrast. Both of these are clamping values so we don't get into pure white overexposure. But in my opinion, it just kind of makes everything look gray. I don't really like the way that looks. So I honestly rely on doing some post-processing outside of Keyshot to resolve this issue. Now, if you wanna give it some bloom, you can do that too. That makes it look like it's glowing. Just set the intensity to one, give it a big bloom radius, like 60, 65 maybe. And then the bloom threshold allows you to have it only affect the areas that are the brightest. So if we set this to say 0.5 or even higher, you can see how that works. And you can always reduce the bloom intensity to make it a little more subtle. I actually relied on a glow effect that I used in DaVinci Resolve to do the final blooming on my image. The way I address this bright white area actually is in the ground plane and compositing. So if we look in the scene tree and we turn off the ground plane, you will see that those bright white areas go away and it looks quite nice. The interesting thing is our spotlight has no effect on the glass itself. The glass and say a polished metals, I think those are not gonna reflect this spotlight because the spotlight has no surface area, unlike an area light does. So what's happening here is our ground plane is reflecting the caustics and the light from the spotlight up onto our glass, making it too bright. So my solution for this was simply to render two images. So I turned off the ground plane and I rendered one image and I rendered it uh, with uh, alpha transparency background. And then that way the black doesn't show up and you just get the two glass objects. And then I rendered another image just like this. And I layered them up so I could put the other one that's not overexposed on the top layer. And then I did some of my final uh, glow effects and things like that in DaVinci Resolve, which again, may be a tutorial for another time. So with that, I think you've got all the ingredients to make some really cool renderings on your own as a challenge. Okay, as a challenge, I am challenging you to take what you've learned here and use the prism to create some cool effects. Go ahead and share your results with me on Instagram. I am at Will Gibbons Design. Tag me because I wanna share the cool results that you make with just the prism as we talked about it here. So with that, hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial and until next time, happy rendering.